Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Bear Naked ABCs, where we discuss every BNL song from seven to Y, whether it is serious or it's a joke. And we are all recording from our homes tonight, which is good because this is a naked track. So you know what that means, guys. <laughs> and tonight we have Jeff, Aaron, and Stefan all joining us. Thank you, gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Hello. And as our special guests, we have the we have Dan and Rocky from the band Fully Clothed Gents, the premier Bare Naked Ladies cover band. Woo! Nice to talk to you guys. How often do you guys do concerts? Well, nowadays, you know, because we're men of a certain age, you know, we're pretty selective about the gigs that we do. But, um, you know, several years ago, we were gigging, I think, on a monthly basis or about six or 12 or 20 times a year. It really depends. We're on we're on the Canadian border, so there's a great demand for bare naked ladies and tragically hip and Sloan, all kinds of Canadian music. Um, but uh, nowadays, we you know we do gigs that interest us, and uh, you know we we played for the Buffalo Sabers in our hometown of Buffalo, New York. Nice, uh, that's we, awesome. Yeah, we we do fundraisers that are really really great. Um, we have some local bars and things that we play at. And then we uh, we play with some. We actually do a lot of gigs at a, at a local club called the uh, the Trell, which is a great music club in downtown Buffalo. And we play with other bands doing great Canadian music, like the you know we play with the band called Strip, that's really big in Buffalo, Toronto, and beyond. They play in Las Vegas. Um, so that's kind of our thing right now. We play we do gigs at our interest. We're kind of done with the playing in the bars in the corner every weekend. It's not <laughs> been there, done that. So now we're kind of like, we look for the interesting gig. So um, if you've got an interesting gig for us, give us a call and we'll come to your doorstep and play. Wonderful. Nice. So I, I want to ask each of you, you may have different answers. What's your favorite song to play? Mine, quite honestly, is Shoebox for some reason. I know that. Yeah. Okay, hey. shoebox. Um, I think mine is Bank Job. Ooh, I love Bank Job. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that song as well. <laughs> and I think we, key, so that's pretty much a crowd stopper right there. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, because you know we're you know we're obviously we're a cover band. It's very rare that the the hair on the back of my neck stands up. But when we do a Bank Job, we kind of uh, it's like I look over at like Pat you know, plays keyboards or you look at the drummer and look at Rocky and go, man, we're almost like a real band. You know, we, sound, <laughs> we, we, we kind of do our own version and it's pretty cool. So we're kind of like, yeah, man, bank job. We're rocking it out. So I, I really like that. So that's kind of cool. Yes. Now, Dan, what's your, what's your position in the band? Um, my position is the middle position. No, it's just a <laughs> missionary. <laughs> the <B. laughs> I I am actually the bass player, so I play bass. Wow, you have some big shoes to fill there. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so no, I, a lot of people don't recognize how intricate and how demanding mm. his base plays. You know, his base parts are pretty, pretty damn demanding. Yeah. And then I, always, I always say to Rocky, you know, singing backups while playing his parts is really, really challenging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's kind of like that. that. Kind of like that. There, my encouragement is just suck it up. Seriously. Knock <laughs> 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 off. The guys are whacking away on six strings, so seriously. <laughs> and Rocky, you're the lead singer, is that right? It's true. You know, they uh, labeled me there. One trick pony. <laughs> I know it. Okay. <laughs> You guys didn't, when I asked you for your favorite song, you didn't say tonight's song, which is surprising. But I should probably introduce what tonight's song is. Uh, and considering we've been doing a lot of joking around, it's, it's apropos because tonight we're talking about humor of the situation. Come on now, now, come on now, now, enjoy the humor of the situation. Come on now, now, come on now, now, enjoy the What album is it off from? This one, I okay, I uh, I was going a little bit back and forth between Maroon or maybe You Should Drive, but I'm ninety percent sure it's Maroon because for me, I know I haven't. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Convention Ears is my touchstone for that album, and there's a lot of that same sound in the song, although it's definitely much more frenetic and high energy. It's got the the great synths and the lush arrangement, the slick production with Stephen Page at the absolute top of his game on vocals. So I placed it at Maroon. So that's, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, Aaron, when we first started this challenge, I was like, I'm going to make him look like a fool like 90% of the time, I bet, <laughs> because he's going to choose from so many albums. And like, it's just, you have been like spot on or at least like really I've been close. close most of the time. Yeah. I, it's, it's interesting how they clearly have a progression and an arc and like a, a ballistic trajectory throughout <laughs> their career. You can really track it. I mean, I, I feel fairly confident now that I've, we're, we're in what the, the, uh, the H's now. So near the end of the H's, I've heard enough now that I feel like I can fairly confidently place it within like at least a couple of albums, two or three. Um, there's no way I'm going to mistake like silver ball for Gordon, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. We'll see, my friend. <laughs> that one day. I still, I still have plenty of opportunities to embarrass myself, so don't worry. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say now that you mentioned conventioneers. That's one of my. Mm. I, I love, love that song. song. Love yeah, that that's song. a really, that's a really good. I gave, I gave that one a perfect up, five. And you, and I can say this, even though neither Rocky or I said "Humor of the Situation" as our favorite song, um, I can guarantee with. I think 101% accuracy. We play it at every show. Oh, wow. wow. It's, it's a great, great song. The situation I, I is always, one that we always play. We do. That's I was very, very pleased by this one. one. It's a really fun oh, song. It really is. High energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Which is how he started. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we talk about where that, that high energy comes from. Of course, this is the naked track off from Maroon. And it's very coincidental because of the concept and the discussion and theme that they have in this song yep. um but also it is the last naked track to ever be released Ooh, look at that Intriguing. So, this is also the second naked track we've ever covered and all of a sudden we're already to the last one <laughs> <laughs> we'll come yeah, back around one to was, the other one so. first one was alcohol right it, uh, ooh, yes you made me think there for a minute <laughs> you know, that's a funny thing. Humor the situation and alcohol, from a player standpoint, the chord and the arrangement. It's one song that the, when we first got together as a band, some of the band members have trouble. They were confusing those two songs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the bridges are kind of similar types of things. And so interesting that you guys made that segue. It's kind of weird to me. <laughs> well, speaking of the chords. <laughs> Well, speaking of the chords, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Aaron on the uh -oh. spot a little bit here now. Aaron, we're going to have yes. you do a breakdown, but these guys play the song. Yeah, I was going to say, okay, you can, can correct totally me. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on. Okay, well, that that's actually great. I'm glad to have you guys here because a lot of times I'm like, I think this is about right, but uh, it's not, it'll be nice to have someone to uh, steer me right here. 
So the humor of the situation, let's break it down. Uh, to my to my ear, it was recorded at approximately 151 beats per minute. I don't think they were using a click track or a metronome, but it's right around there. Uh, it's in the key of A major, mostly. <laughs> um, the intro vamps on A major to F sharp minor. Uh, the verse chords are A major, F sharp minor, D, E, which to music nerds like myself, you'll recognize the 16451 progression right away. Not only is it a classic pop, rock, jazz progression, but the first three chords, 164, is the classic NBC chime, right? So very, very recognizable there. Um, so you have the intro, which goes between A major and F minor. The verse, uh, A, F sharp minor, D, E, A. The pre-chorus, uh, which is one of my favorite parts of the song, is uh, which your C section is A to F natural, which is, I guess, like a passing chord. Uh, and then F sharp minor, G, D, back to uh, G, D, E, back to E, to uh, A to E. Into the chorus, where you launch into A, F sharp minor, D, B minor, minor, E A, a minor. which is very similar to the verse, but slightly different. You get a one four, a one six four two five one, uh, which I like because the, going from instead of a four to a five, which are perfect four, perfect fifth tonic, you go four two to a minor chord, back up to the perfect fifth, down to the one. It sounds much stronger. The resolution is much more satisfying to me, at least. I'm gonna break uh, you to right there. Ears. Yeah, please. I saw Dan pull out the the bass. <laughs> okay, yeah, please, Dan. If you want to play something for us, I'm happy to listen. Well, it's kind of it's the when you walked in, I yeah. said with a grin that we were just laughing at you. We all had a smile because it was us. Obviously, he knows the words. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, I think it's it's funny. But it's it's kind of like it's what's funny, what's clever about it. I think is that, like as you rightly noted, mm. Aaron, there's there's minor chords, and usually minor chords are associated with sad songs. So it's always like this is a, <laughs> yeah. right, right, a very sad song you know, and so it's, it's, it's one of the few songs that has minor chords that mm. really is quite upbeat and like you said frenetic and happy there's nothing downer about it it's really like a like you said that 151 clicks it's a really fast paced song yeah it's um, a banger <laughs> and then even even the bridge where it's like have you heard the yeah about the boy? Even that's kind of like a, that when you just when you do the, like those descending things, it's almost kind of sad. But they even make that kind of upbeat and funny. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. end house across the street. We, you know, <laughs> yeah, we, the I, lyrics, I think, the wordplay is on point on this. <laughs> Rocky is really probably out of everyone. Rocky is probably the biggest bare naked ladies fan because he really kind of started the band. You know, I mean, I I always liked bare naked ladies and always liked them, but then you know, Rocky. You know, just the clever, the, the you know, humor of the situation is a song, but everything they do is about humor. It's it's amazing how they can be so serious and introspective, but then have like this. And this is really a song about like a breakup or being thrown out of your yeah. apartment by your girlfriend. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <it's- laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree. I'll, I'll probably come back to that when we talk lyrics because there's, there's quite a lot to unpack there, as the kids say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so we go uh, intro verse one so a b pre-chorus is c i guess you could count that as like the second half of the verse but i'm going to call it a pre-chorus into your d with chorus then you got verse two b pre-chorus c chorus d then your bridge your e section so this is the one that i'm least confident about so if you guys can maybe clue me in here let me know how i do uh to my mind i'm hearing d to a to c to g to g minor again maybe as a passing chord to D to A to D, then it goes to F sharp minor, C, G, G minor, D, E. So my best guess is we're switching to E minor here as the chords mostly align with that. And the E at the end is major as we transition back to the chorus. So it becomes a nice perfect fifth to go back down resolve to the tonic of A major. How'd I do? When it comes down to chords, I only know lyrics. So <laughs> That's fine. <what> I- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it in. No, I, sound good to me. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm a little intimidated by Aaron. He's like, you know, we, we, seriously. This, no, this is <laughs> my ego is big enough as it is, Dan. <laughs> you know, so, sometimes like you just play a song so long, you don't think about mm. the chords. 
They just kind of like, so when someone will ask me what the chords are, I'm kind of have to go, oh shit. I don't know. <laughs> it's more of a muscle memory thing. Yeah. Fingers just go where they need to go. <laughs> My fingies just kind of do it. <laughs> but, but that bridge part though is kind of cool. It's kind of, it's on D and then it descends to uh, C sharp, you know, while you're holding most of the D. Mm, okay, 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 that's, that's what, what that is. is. Then, you, then you go to C, and then once once again you descend to B, you hold that C, so it's kind of like a B C, and then you go to B flat to the hand up to D, and then to A, A major, right? Yeah. Yep. Then he woke up big on his face when he found There's a again. And this is and this is the one where it goes, yeah, so B then the second time it goes from B flat to D to E major. Yeah. Uh, then it's come on now now. Come on now now. Enjoy the humor of the situation. That's kind Excellent. of Excellent. Yeah, so that's kind of but you're you're right, but it, it's but once again, like the fact that you and I are we could probably debate what the names of those words <laughs> because they're they're really con they're conflating and mixing up interesting. Oh definitely major yeah. and minor in a happiness descending chords that are kind of you know kind of like a d g c c b thing so even amongst us musician folk we're kind of confused well what are they doing there <laughs> the beauty of bare naked ladies how and like if you're not a bare naked ladies fan like if you're like a led zeppelin fan a hardcore rocker oh you know f the bare naked ladies they're they're <laughs> sissy thing like that right you, when you show those guys that play zeppelin stuff that are hardcore they're like, oh, damn, those guys are pretty damn clever what they did there. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. I've, I've been consistently uh, surprised and delighted by some of the the stuff that they do musically. It's um, I they're, I mean, I don't know if uh, they went to music school or, or what, but they clearly know what they're doing. And there's little in-jokes and stuff. There's things they do that make me laugh as someone who like went to music theory classes and stuff like that. So... They're de they definitely know what they're doing, and it's always uh, really funny to kind of see, to analyze it and see what's going on. Um, lovely strings on the bridge, by the way. I really mm -hmm. love strings in rock music, and they're really lush and sweet here, and almost like melodramatic. So you can see this kind of turn. They say, you know, comedy is tragedy plus time, right? So I think maybe, I I'm kind of getting ahead of ourselves in the conversation here, but with the lyrics, it starts off with the narrator and his friends potentially talking about, you know, the, the woman or, or the person he eventually breaks up with. And they're, like, laughing at her, right? And he's saying, oh, can't you find the humor in the situation? And then at the end, he's the one who, who got his comeuppance. And he's like, oh, well, maybe I can find the humor in the situation. <laughs> Try and take your own advice. Um, so then we come out of the bridge back to the chorus, D, verse 3, B, pre-chorus, C. And then the final pre-chorus is twice as long, and you get this nice gradual crescendo feeling of something building. And then you launch into that final chorus with this kind of growing, I don't want to say cacophony, because, because that implies that it sounds uh, 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 like uh, discordant, but it, it's just actually this really nice crescendo, this really nice build. And there's some absolutely wonderful piano work here from Kevin that would not be out of place in like a Ben Fold song. Um, ends on a really nice resounding A major to really hammer it home in a classic and a rock band ending. I could definitely see why you'd play this live with that ending. You know, you're just kind of really hammering on the chords and then and then kind of bring it home at the end. So uh, I was I was really really delighted by this song. It was uh, a nice gem. It's going to be definitely one of one of the highest rated for me thus far. I think. Well, and what they do in this song that I was just talking about t two three weeks ago with how long is they go from that bridge right back to the chorus and it gives it that jam it takes it out of this lower point of the song and then mm -hmm. brings you right back into the rocker moment whereas in how long they go from the chorus uh, the bridge right into the next verse and it doesn't recover and it's one of the things i thought was missing in that song was that it doesn't recover from that bridge and give you that like nice big bang at the end of it that's what this song does do yeah yeah Damn, you guys really know your stuff. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Aaron knows his stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like Dan and Aaron could just take take over the cast at this point, and the other four just gonna go out to, for a drink or something. <laughs> now, so I want to go over what the what the instruments are in this song. So we have Jim on electric bass, and that's it. We have 
Tyler on tambourine and drums, by the way. Tyler, amazing with the tambourine in there. Sounds yeah. beautiful. And then we have, this is a Kevin song. We have Kevin on the organ, the piano, <laughs> and the vocorder. Um, and I and, and he puts organ, I want to say that's, that sounds like, and Aaron can correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like a Hammond organ, um, which is very much known not... for like, people would recognize Hammond organs from like 70s music. Right. Yeah, the whole the whole Bob Dylan revolution. Yeah. Allman Brothers, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Funk. Oh, and then I have uh, that, we have Ed on acoustic guitar and electric guitar, and we have just Steve on, on just vocals yeah just vocals you know that's it <laughs> <laughs> only the, only the rocky. expression <laughs> of human emotion no big oh, deal um. <laughs> hey vocals are an instrument <laughs> they are I, I, I have been arguing that the entire time talk to danny says i'm not a musician. <laughs> so lyricist. You, know, right. you know what they you know what they call a band without uh, a song? better off <laughs> 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 it's awful, guys. I went to school for music, and I'm a vocalist and a drummer, so I got all the jokes. I just, I was, I was the brunt of everything. Now, Aaron, you introduced a part last, a new section last week, so I got to bring us to that <laughs> section. Trouble with Tracy. Trouble with Tracy. Yep. The mixing on this. My only problem that I have really? with the song is the mixing so again with how long we had like a song that was very much just you couldn't hear kevin or jim on that song at all on this song all you can hear is kevin and tyler you really until the bridge you really don't hear the guitar and you it's there but it's it's almost background no not noise but background music that kind of blends and you don't really hear Ed much at all and and I didn't hear Jim until I put it on really good speakers and then I could hear Jim. Uh, well, you, I yeah, was going to say listen to it the right way. <laughs> they, were you using headphones because I I just thought about it and Ed is way in like the right ear or, or yeah. something like that. It almost reminds me of um this is actually a, this would probably be a point in your favor Tracy. I th- I like the mixing on this to a, to a certain degree but it did remind me with Ed being so far out on the side of like those early Beatles stereo conversions where they mm-hmm. didn't really understand stereo. So they had like the entire Ringo Starr drum set in one ear and they had like right. John Lennon yelling in the left ear. <laughs> and you're just like, what is going on? This is not, no. It was novel, I'm sure, for the time, but it felt like they're like, oh, this stereo thing, let's experiment with this. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think there's a direct comparison there, but it did, I guess now that you that you talk about it, it did kind of remind me. He was pretty far out, uh, literally, on, on the right. Far out, man. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It sounds very blurred, and I like to hear I like to hear it. He's great. Um, and so it's good to hear him, like, those notes very uh, crisp. And it, and it wasn't crisp in this song. Uh, speaking as someone who um, is an audio engineer... There's only so much space in the song, especially when you have a lot of middle middle ground instruments. The voice, the piano, the guitar, they all kind of occupy the same space, which is maybe why they put Ed so far over on the ear to try and create some space for him. Because, yeah, with, with a song that's got piano so bright and up front, I feel like that may have been... Maybe previously he was more towards the middle and it sounded kind of muddy and it was harder to mm. distinguish what was going on. That's just my guess. I, I think you're right. You have all this, all those major instruments that are driving up the middle in the same direction. You got to find a lane in the highway in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Panning life left or right, you're going to get a little more separation. So, yeah, I think you're spot on there as a as a audio person myself. So, but it's it's a, it's a cool sound. It's, it's it is a pretty. I mean, it's an interesting song. But again, it's um, I, I I I mean, I love Kevin piano parts. I love the fact. Oh that, yeah. I love the fact that you guys recognize what Kevin does. That that's, that's oh, yeah. <laughs> oh don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's like in every band. So in, in our band, so our little bare naked ladies tribute band, fully cool gents. Um, <laughs> our 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 Kevin Hearn, our secret weapon is uh, a guy named Patrick Collette, and Patrick Collette sings the Ed parts actually in the song. But he plays um, keyboards. He does he does Kevin's keyboard parts and he sings ed's parts wow. he's like a weapon he's like wow. he sings that's awesome he plays everything 
you know, and, and it's, it's just amazing. But like without Pat, when Pat's not at, like sometimes we, we rehearse without Pat because he lives in a different city several mm. hours away. You know, if, if Pat's not at rehearsal, we'll just do some, some Steve songs. But we'll be like, that just didn't quite sound right because Pat's adding in little little things on the keyboard that just make the song go to the next level. Kevin Kevin Hearn's like the total secret weapon, go to the next level guy. And oh, now yeah. that you're with them, you definitely see that in the in the four on stage. Oh yeah. So you like the bare naked ladies, do you? Well, what about They Might Be Giants? My name is Greg Simpson, and I host a They Might Be Giants fan podcast, and it's called This Might Be a Podcast. This Might Be a Podcast is a song-by-song podcast featuring a different guest every episode from normal fans like you and I, but also I've had guests such as John Darneal of The Mountain Goats, Justin McElroy of My Brother, My Brother and Me, Hutch Harris of The Thermals, Mike Park of Asian Man Records, Franz Nikolai of The Hold Steady, and Danny Weinkoff and Marty Beller of They Might Be Giants, and past drummers Dan Hickey and Brian Doherty. Search for Punk News, or This Might Be a Podcast, on any podcast platform and you will find us. This Might Be a Podcast, brought to you by punknews.org. Oh yeah. Well, does anyone else have anything to add up musically about this song? I, I want to get to Rocky. Poor Rocky. We've left him out of this conversation. I think we need to go over to the lyrics and discuss the lyrics a little bit. Absolutely. I'm ready. All right. Let's talk about what this song is actually about, not just how beautiful it sounds. Sure. Um, See, so I don't get into it. <laughs> you know, when you look at the, like the least musical guy in the band, it is me, and I get that. Um, I have no shame in saying that. I'm a, I, I happen to somewhat sound like Stephen Page when I sing. I was going to actually say that, and I, and I don't know if I can point this out, but when we were doing the um, early stuff and you sang this song, you have a perfect Stephen Page voice. Um, I, I do, I do kind of hope that before this is over, we can, we can all hear that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Whatever you guys want, you know, I mean, <laughs> play your strengths, I guess, is what the you know, try to say. <laughs> I'm not going to give I'll just give us the end of the song, the hey. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I mean, the lyrics, I'm, believe it or not, and this is going to sound terrible, especially on a podcast, but everything with, with Bare Naked Ladies, and like Dan said, um, my brother introduced me to Bare Naked Ladies, I want to say in like 1991, and they were so close. But we're in Buffalo, and Buffalo is literally a uh, stone's throw from Canada, uh, and they're from, I believe, Scarborough, correct? Mm-hmm. So uh, they're right across the Niagara River, and Everything with the Bare Naked Ladies for me wasn't so much lyrical, it was the mood that most of her songs put me in. And for me, I think there's usually two ways, personally, to look at a song. Either you're going to really uh, engross yourself what the lyrics mean, or you're going to connect to them on a certain level by the tone and the feeling you're going to get out of them. And for the most part, for me personally, I get more out of the tone and the feeling out of the, out of their lyrics than I do the actual words. So, you know, to, to, to go over them... Uh, specifically in terms of words, we can hash it out, but I'll be reading along with you, and then we'll try and interpret it together if you want to change. <laughs> well, that's all I, right. No, that's... That's, I'm the big lyrics guy on on the cast, and so <laughs> we'll break it down at, like in depth well, in a minute. But it, That's an interesting point, though, Rocky, because uh, one of my favorite musicians, Mike Patton, talked about in an interview how when he writes a song, he writes the melody, and he just kind of makes up, he almost like scats, like syllables to, to fit the melody and then he thinks of lyrics that he can put in there that kind of reflects the feeling of the song uh which i do too when i write a song i write i do everything probably backwards from how most people do it i write like the the melody and then the the chord structure and then i write the lyrics and then the last thing i do is title it so i mean uh that for me that's how i do so so with that in mind what is your headspace what are you feeling when you sing this song high energy you know, I mean, just the way it starts off with the drums coming in, quite honestly, it's really going to catch people's attention. Yeah. A lot of times we will start a show with this song. You know, typically speaking, we're going to start a show with either a, a humorous situation or... Um, too little, too late. <laughs> uh, okay. you know, both of them have a very similar feel to me in terms of high energy. Mm. So where I'm at with these ones is, um, first of all, don't forget the lyrics. <laughs> you know, uh, it's kind of tough to go watch a cover band and the guy's butchering everything. Uh, so knock on wood for the last 14, 15 years we've been doing this, we've been um, entertaining the crowds. And 
we never kind of miss what we are. You know, we're a, we're a cover band for a somewhat obscure band. You know, Brandon and Ladies really aren't universally known, even though they're a lot more popular than they were back in the 90s, early 90s when they first started. Um, but everyone that comes there, if they were not a Bare Naked Ladies fan, they leave thinking, wow, I didn't, A, know I knew that many songs by Bare Naked Ladies, and then like that many songs mm-hmm. by Bare Naked Ladies. Mm-hmm. So, and that was pretty much exactly my, um, my feeling behind them, always watching them, is the more you listen to them, the more you watch them, the more you actually went to a show, the more you actually fell in love with the band. I mean, they are very infectious in terms of their attitude, and not that we ever try and mimic them. That's not what we're about. You know, we don't try and dress like them. We don't, you know, we just try and play their music, uh, sound like them, and really appreciate what they do. And I think that comes across on stage. We have fun. So um, as a big guy, I'm 6'4 and not slender. You know, so when you're, when you're coming out there, it's like more of like watching meatloaf on stage. <laughs> what a lot. You, know? you want to stay about three or four feet away from the stage. Uh, either that or we're a rain gear. But um, yeah. We just when we're into it, most of the songs they do take a different tone, uh, Aaron. So when I'm in this one, it's just usually high energy, um, and then trying to make sure emotionally you're hitting the different parts of the song. You know, but again, I'm not technical like you guys. The bridge, the chorus, and even across it, there's there are different tones you want to try and hit on those. So um, just hitting them in the right way, primarily. Well, I, you said something that that kind of stood out for me, and I think that's what brought me on. You know, brought me to the dance with bare naked ladies, and that is. Um, the diversity of them. They're, they are kind of an, obs- mm. uh, an obscure band. And I've played songs like The Flag or Call and Answer or um, um, <clears throat> even Brian Wilson. And people said, I love that. That's great. You know, who is that? Three of like, my that's, favorite that's, songs. That's, yeah, right. And I said, that's the band that did One Week. Yeah. Because for yeah. a lot of people, that's the song they know. And yeah. to tell them that, yeah, that the same band did The Flag and did Call and Answer and, you know, um, just blows people's minds about them. That's the kind of band it, they are. I mean, you get you get everything from them. It's funny because when Tracy asked me to do this podcast, I had I had heard maybe 10, 11 songs of Bare Naked Ladies, and I only heard that many because he did them at karaoke or played some for me or whatever. <laughs> um, so he's like, you want to do a podcast? We're going to go through all the Bare Naked Ladies albums. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, okay, three, four albums, no problem. We'll get this done. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, wow, they have this huge catalog. And even more impressive than how prolific they are, the the breadth of the material. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan. Of, I mentioned the Beatles earlier. I like David Bowie a lot. I like artists who can really change and be chameleons. And one album can sound, like we said, comparing something like Maroon or like Gordon to, to the Silver Bowl, totally different albums. And almost you might not even think it's the same band, except Ed's voice is fairly, uh, fairly recognizable. It's recognizable, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just been really a really cool journey for me musically to to dig into this band and find so much buried treasure here. So hopefully that's part of what the podcast is doing is helping other people find that as well as when you guys play. I actually um, very, very quickly before starting up the uh, meeting here checked out, uh, I found a little clip of you guys playing live on YouTube uh, covering Enid and I really dug it. You really captured that energy and uh, the harmonies were really good, so I, I would love to see you guys live sometime. You gotta, you gotta make sure you post and let us know if you got a show coming up. Yeah, it sounds a lot better Thank live you. sometimes than it does. Oh, those recordings are always hard. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> blowing out the spe- the microphone of someone's iPhone or whatever. But no, I could, I could hear. It, it sounded really good. I was, uh, I was really enjoying it. Now Stefan's doing his best impression of a mannequin right now. But I, I do want to break him out of that. And, and ask yeah, I was going to ask if he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, what's your thoughts on this song? Uh, I really do like it. It's, you know, BNL usually has the uh, kind of a, a certain set of musical sound that comes from them, which is kind of typical. But I like this song simply because it is a little bit atypical in which it's just, I don't know, it sounds different to me. I'm not musically inclined. I, I'm not very good at lyrics. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Rocky that, um, I hope I got his name right, um, that's not the lyrics. I, I can't understand the damn thing that they say. But um, <laughs> it's, it, that, but that's with any song. I mean, I'm still learning songs from the 80s that I've heard a million times. And I'm like, that was the lyrics? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Steve Winwood that sung that. It was Huey Lewis and the News. I just found that out. Easy to get them confused, though, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Uh, I'm learning and discovering myself, but uh, when it comes to BNL, they're very distinct. And mm. it goes by the feelings and the emotions that is brought out from their songs that I really like. And this song is definitely upbeat and excitable, and I really like that. But it also sounds different for some reason. Yeah. And I kind of like that too. Yeah. And it has like a, it's like it's upbeat, it's driving, it's a party song. Like I said, we start off shows with it because we want to get the party started. But at the same time, it's a bit dark. It's, it's kind of very dark yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, to see a bunch of people in a bar go, woohoo, and, you know, holding their drinks up. And then it's really like, it's kind of like maniacal. And, you know, like the, to me, the keyboard part's almost like a, like a, reminds me of scary clowns at the circus, you know, you know, it's like, it's a little bit, uh, but I, that's what I love about that's that's the that's the beauty of bare naked ladies that they know how to add those musical elements that evoke the emotion that Rocky and Stefan pointed out. I mean, it, that's it's not it, and Aaron. I think Aaron was alluding to it too. As a musician, it's what you're striving for. But many try and most fail, but they they mm -hmm. seem to always hit their mark with everything they do. You know, and it, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. And it's not a well-known song. I mean, you know, when you think about it out there in terms of their catalog, there's not a lot of people that really know about humor of the situation. So. When they hear it, more often than not, I think they're more pleasantly surprised than they are like, eh, you know, kind of mixes in with the other ones. There's a unique sound to it, a unique feeling that comes out of it. You know, when you asked earlier what songs we like playing, I do thoroughly enjoy playing the song. You know, it, okay. it is a good high energy, good song. People haven't heard and they get into it. You know, people are usually up in the seats and dancing and, and you name it, the song. So it's fun. Well, if you don't, if you don't mind, I want to go into what the song is about. Because we mentioned the darkness of this song, and this song is dark. Um, for such a bright, poppy, fun song, the, the topic and the theme of this song is very dark. So there is some controversy. I don't know if... I, if so people argue whether or not this is a man that is cheating on his wife. Or if this is man who is just emotionally abusive, like that's not enough. I was gonna um, say either way, this song is only like, emotionally you, abusive. Yeah, you can't sugarcoat. This song is about an a hole. <laughs> oh yeah, I the mean, main the character is, is an a hole. He's a <laughs> who gets his comeuppance, but <laughs> he's gaslighting her throughout the whole song. Like, come on, you're overreacting. Can't you see the humor in this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It <laughs> come on, it's just a joke. You know, it just brushes everything off like that. I, I don't see anything in there that says that he's cheating. I could see where people might might insinuate that, but I almost uh, think that this is more just... Caller ID, though. That caller ID dot line is the one that draws me to cheating. Yeah. Maybe. Which, first of all, these days, well, you're like, oh, I, I feel like he's calling from some other girl's house. Yeah, that, house. that's exactly what I think. The caller. Yeah, that's, that's Not the only that... But why is he naked when he arrives at her door an hour right. later? It sounds like he yeah. immediately ran, jumped in the car, and then drove, and didn't even think to like get into his clothes just to try and get there <laughs> in time. And then by the then she'd already thrown all his stuff out on the lawn. <laughs> well, and even the line because the song is called "The Humor of the Situation," so in perfect. Because yeah. I also, and I definitely agree with Rocky as a singer myself, primarily, um, and lyricist and songwriter. I agree that what sweeps me into a song is the vocal performance. Mm -hmm. that, that'll sell. That, that's what I want to hear. Um, but I, I'm also a Leonard Cohen fan and like the, the great lyric lyricist. That, you know, so I love analyzing the lyrics of it. The song is about a guy who's basically brushing off his actions, in my opinion, as a joke. It's funny, you know, whatever. I don't care how hurt you are. And then the twist, the bridge, is basically a joke. He's telling a joke. Have you heard, you know, the one about the, the boy who moved into the hen house? I always interpreted that <laughs> as this guy who's basically just sleeping around. Hen, 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 hen. Fox in the and hen then, house. And then he woke up to find that they were all gone because basically, you know, the emperor's new clothes. They all realized that you're not you're not this great guy that you said you were. You're not the great guy that you thought you were. Um, so that's uh, that's where uh, the cheating thing is always cut. Uh, like to me, I've never thought this wasn't a song about cheating. That's what I see, about Bob I... Horn Leghorn. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. And, and Tracy, see, I thought that when he was calling, I. I went back to like, okay, well, in the 90s, we didn't have cell phones. In 2000s, right. they were new, Color but ID. not most people didn't have them. They weren't prevalent. Um, so if someone was calling, they were come, calling from a phone number from that house people phone. recognized. Yeah. But they just got done talking about how she was at, they were at this restaurant or bar or somewhere with this group of people. 
he gaslights her. He he basically like insults her. Everyone laughs at her at his joke before she walks in. And then she gets hurt. He gaslights her. She leaves. And then he sticks around and he calls her from the bar and that's what the number that he sees her calling for or she sees him calling from is he's still at the bar hanging out with the friends even though she got hurt and she's like you know what i you're still there like you didn't even bother follow me you know what i'm done with you <laughs> that was always my interpretation i don't know tracy i'm gonna say a word here you better get ready with the censor uh all oh, right the song the uh, song is about a word that did not exist, at least to my knowledge, back in the 90s. It's a fuckboy is the word that we use. That's uh, what the kids say. And so he's just sleeping around. I, I totally agree. This this guy's this guy's sleeping around, giving this girl the run around. She wises up, rightly throws him out. And uh, he was, uh, to, if I can counter some of that crudity with uh, a quote from the bard, hoist with his own petard. He, uh, he got, his, got his own comeuppance. Yeah. 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 I- Never heard of any dude who threw a woman stuff out on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, always, it's always it's always the guy. The shit that's, the that's, that's, that's the, the move. move. That's, 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 that's the move. You know what do you have at that point? If you're in that situation, you know you got to send a message. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like a perspective. Maybe the song is a perspective switch where you know mm. he's trying to. He was an asshole, and in the song he's trying to see it from the other person's perspective or something like that. I'm not sure, but. I'm not again. I'm not a lyric guy. I'm a, I'm a more of a music player guy. But uh, but I, I find it just funny because I think like Rocky said, and I think uh, yeah, it's Stefan said. I it just it's the mood, like the mood of the song. It just kept. Mm. It's it's you know it's 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 not apologetic though, is it? It's not. There's nothing mm. apologetic about it. Nope. <laughs> no, it's not sorry. No, I, I don't. I don't feel that at all. <laughs> and I I want to put out some things in here that are programmatic as well. Like so. At the point where he says your na- your next door neighbor soaked me with the hose, it's not just hose. He hits that note and he goes, uh, it's almost a note that if you were being sprayed with a hose, yeah. you would hit that note. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine him like be walking along telling the story and then getting hit with it and just cringing. Well, even that, I think that kind of sticks to what Dan said, where he's not apologetic. I mean, even after that happened, he's like, yeah. I've never felt so small. I never felt so dissed. He's yeah. like, what the hell did I do? Like, he's yeah. he, <laughs> this, he's, I am he's very victim. clueless. About yeah. It. yeah, right. I am the victim. What happened? Is that the McNulty line from The Wire? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did I do? Yeah, no, but so the, he was naked. That's why he got he got hosed down. So how is he going to be naked unless he's coming from a, from a, a tryst, an affair? I ask you. I beseech you, Tracy. <laughs> Sounds like a player. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, and also, um, like you said about the bar, if, if, okay, so this is way, this is going way deep. I'm way beyond what we talked about, but total analytical. So if she already knew he was at the bar, she wouldn't be surprised if he called from there. Back in the 90s, uh, you know, we had caller ID, so you were calling from a house phone. So that's where I interpret, okay, after she left the bar because she was so upset because, like, one of my favorite lines of this whole song, there's an overwhelming stench of alibi. Um, kind mm-hmm. of setting up the alibi that mm-hmm. I'm still at the bar. He left with somebody else. He went to her house. He called her from that house. So the girl he's with, wife, girlfriend, knew that he was at some other girl's house at that point. Like, it was all planned. It was all set up. I just really hear a player in a song. And the hens line, to me, kind of sells that. So, <laughs> like I said, you, I will overanalyze lyrics until 100% they're... <laughs> 100% in agreement, my friend. You, you yeah. won't be over with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. I can't wait to play this song live again. So I can <laughs> you know, go like, I'll be thinking. I'll be like, man, you were right. Like, I never thought about before. You'll start thinking of the, you'll lose the lyrics. You'll be like, oh yeah. <laughs> As a man whore. <laughs> it is a song about it's, being a man whore. <laughs> and they've never been afraid to sing songs from unsavory characters before. Oh, That's yes. one thing I love about that. Especially on Steve. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, you told you you talked about the whole looking at each other while playing. And I always like to tell this story because the one time um, I actually got to see BNL live, uh, they I think they were doing they were doing too. I'm pretty sure it was too little, too late. And um, there's like this middle the second verse where you could tell something went wrong, and they pull it back together because they're awesome, they're amazing. Um, and they get to the end of the song and they're like, "One of us sang the wrong lines." They're like, "Was it me? Was it you? You know, who's the alpha in this group?" And apparently Jim followed Ed and. Kevin followed uh, Steve's verses. 
they they turned back to Tyler and said, "Who was it?" He's like, "Lyric Spirits." I'm just rocking back here. <laughs> <laughs> but just that playfulness on stage that they get when something happens. That's one thing I love about the group. Yeah, yeah. When was I the do... first time you guys saw him? Do you remember? Oof. 90, 97 or ninety eight for me. I think mine was on the Maroon tour. Nice. Yes. I don't mean to do one upsmanship, but I might. <laughs> just being, you know, we're Buffalo guys. You know, we're New York. I was always playing on the Buffalo music scene. You know, in the in the mid eighties, and Bare Naked Ladies played at a band called Nietzsche's, which is on Allen Street in uh, downtown Buffalo. And they had their yellow tape. And I bought the yellow tape from Tyler Stewart out of the back of a van after they had a gig at Nietzsche's in 1980. Wow. 1989, I think. Wow. Oh, he's old. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> at that time, I did original music. I was in an original music band. And we were playing with band. You know, this is like the Google Dolls are from Buffalo. And we played it. A park all the the place called the Continental and the Google Dolls were playing. They weren't famous yet, and I remember like you know we we heard about the, the the bass player. And this is before internet, so the bass player in the band at the time said, "Yeah, there's this band called Bare Naked Ladies, and they're awesome." And I'm like, "All right, cool. I got nothing to do. I'm unemployed. Let's go see them." You know, so we we go to Nietzsche's, and I remember just being blown away because they just really they were just unique. It was because Nietzsche's was kind of like a jazz blues you know alternate club. It it wasn't a rock club. It was more of a, you know, again, bluegrass. And um, and they, they brought in all those elements of the music. You know, you had an upright bass player, Jim Cregan's brother, band at that time. He was playing, you know, so it was kind of like, it was interesting, like how things were kind of like still, Tyler was just starting in the band and coming into the band and everything. So it was kind of interesting, you know, like, um, yeah, so it was, it was kind of a cool, cool thing. So they, they've always been big in Buffalo. They've always had a big thing in Buffalo. I want to ask you, you guys might know this. So at the end of this song, there's some sort of yelling that's going on. All right. I could not pick out what they're yelling in the background at the end of the song. And whore! And whore! <laughs> <laughs> we it's the neighbor! <laughs> what Aaron said. The one that made us lose our PG rating. <laughs> that was so tenuous which, the best. So which yelling? Are you talking about the, 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 the one singular voice or in the background <laughs> hidden or just like uh, like the... the uh, that? It sounds like it. it, 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 it there is, there's someone saying a couple of different words. I couldn't pick out what the words were. But yeah, it's, it's in there and it's very, very short. And I can see Aaron listening to it right now. He's trying to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's during that 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 slow descent into chaos, which again I love the programmatic aspect of that. Of like, here we have this guy whose life is just spiraling down the tube, and the music does exactly the same thing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. he's probably screaming because he's running out the lawn, being chased by a woman with a hose. <laughs> I scream too, <laughs> naked, in fact. <laughs> and then the other thing, while well, Aaron's still listening, like yeah, you got me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. He's saying something, right? There, it's not just screaming. There's something being said. I just can't tell. It's almost like the at the end of Helter Skelter, where you have Ringo Starr like yelling, you know, I got blisters Cranberry on my fingers. Sauce. <laughs> you know, it's it's very similar to that, but they don't even wait for the music to stop. <laughs> they're they're saying Paul is dead. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that they left in there, and I think it's interesting they left this in there, is if you wait that like half a second after the song's done, you have Steve going, all right. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, talking about. I, heard, I, right. I definitely heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's him just kind of, I think, at the end of the, the song being, all right, we're done with it. Let's go get changed back into our clothes now. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes when you're recording like little mistake, like, that might not have been intentional, but like little mistakes in recording or things you group around the studio, you keep it in because it just, it, you know, it was an accident, but now it becomes such a part of the song. You're like, we got to leave it in. It's a part <laughs> of the song now. It's got to stay. It's probably one of those things. But uh, right. yeah, I, I, you know, there's so many like vocal tracks 
going in some of their songs too, where there's just amazing between Ed and Steve. I mean, really, I'm always amazed too by Steve's vocal ap- acrobatics. And I think that's well, this is one of those songs too, mm-hmm. where I think Rocky gets, you know, even though Rocky's self deprecating here, he's only the singer, you know, he, he does, he, he does the Steve stuff so well. There, there is nobody like, and you know, again, you try not to be like this jaded musician when you see some other band doing like a bare naked lady song. Um, but you know, like if Rocky's not singing, I'm just like, I feel bad for the band almost because who sounds like Steve, you know what I mean? He has such vocal range mm. and, um, yeah. and Rocky, like I said, I was joking with you guys before we started the, the session, but you know, when Rocky, you know, the microphone isn't even on yet. People are stepping back. Rocky has mm. that very powerful Steve voice. <laughs> breath. Don't, don't, don't kid you. It's usually the breath. He's, he's, he's bearing very quiet today, but. Yeah, I was going to say, can we get Rocky to show that off? Because he actually did sing a few lines to test this out to see if it could be performed. And that's that blew me away because it was it was Steve. It was perfect. It was sounded so good. Um, can we can we get Rocky? Can you do a couple lines of this for us? Yeah, what song do you want? Do you want this? Yeah, this one. It'd be wonderful. Yeah, I'll we'll try and try and do something. Okay. Don't hold back. Don't hold back, man. Let it loose. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, you're not going to blow out our speakers. You're fine. Come on. When you walked in, I said with a grin, we were just talking about you. We all had to lie because you would cry if we knew we were laughing at you in a momentary long before the band begins to play. There's an overwhelming stand of alibi. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Come on now, now. Come on now, now. Enjoy the humor of the situation. Meow. 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 We didn't meow. talk about that, but that really, I love those little extras yeah, that, that when they that throw that stuff the in. It's perfect. Yeah. That was great. That's a, yeah, that's awesome, awesome. Rocky. That was great. And Steve really, I mean, I made fun of that note earlier, but that hose n- note is really up there. It's almost yeah. operatic. It's it's really gorgeous. I mean, I think Stephen really shines in this song. He, yep, every song, Tracy, he shines yeah, in every yes. song. <laughs> <laughs> I I won't disagree with you on that one, but like songs like this one and "Break Your Heart" are just like oh yeah, you, he just breaks out. Yeah. yeah, that's another that's another song. It's even though it's a slow song, I love playing "Break Your Heart" and the heart. You know who the hardcore fans are when they yell out "Break Your Heart." You know, like okay. That, you, that group over there really knows Bare Naked because yeah. Your Heart is another one that it's, and again, I think Aaron is a musician. Well, I mean, it's a really simple song. It's not that hard to play, but to capture the emotion of that song mm-hmm. and then to have like a, like a Rocky or Steve, like you can hit those damn notes. And I know Rocky gets a little tense sometimes when we want to do it. Cause he's always like, I don't know if I can hit the notes. I'm like, <laughs> you can do it, man. You can do it. <laughs> Rocky. Rocky, it's okay. We talked with Steve. He has a hard time getting those notes on some nights. Yeah. He actually said, like, Break Your Heart is one of those songs that he won't sing it unless he knows that he can hit it. And if his voice isn't there, he won't he won't do that song. But also I feel like the the momentous part of that song, the lead into the last chorus, which is the one everyone thinks about and talks about with Steve, the the where it leads into the final chorus, you could almost lose a little bit. You could break a little bit because it works so oh, yeah. well at that point. <laughs> but yeah, I get that too. But that is that's uh, easily one of my favorite Steve performances. Right at that moment when he goes back into the last chorus. Yeah, and it, you know, once again, you know, he is. Um, and I appreciate Dan saying the kind words about me, but <laughs> he, uh, you know, he's definitely ch- tough to try and follow because there's no one. It's going to fill his shoes. He is so unique out there in terms of a lyricist. Um, and I hate to say this, especially on a Bare Naked Ladies podcast, but <laughs> I kind of lost a lot of interest in the Bare Naked Ladies when he dropped out of the band. You know, they are not the same band. It's peanut butter and jelly. Now we're just down to either the jelly or the peanut butter. <laughs> they need to get back together. So if you're listening to this, <laughs> going out there, <laughs> please. What are I, you gonna do? Yeah, I have... I've expressed the same sentiment, Rocky, and I'm, I'm still the doobie here. I'm still the person who's not even halfway through the library yet. And just from what I've heard, I mean, um, I, I've compared it to, you know, Lennon McCartney or, you know, Waters and Gilmore. Um, I just feel like they're, they're just better. They're stronger together. And uh, I, I'm hopeful that someday uh, mom and dad will, will get back together. <laughs> <laughs> 
as a bare naked ladies tribute band with a guy who sounds like Steve. Mm, you can make it happen. quite well for us. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> what would happen if Steve were singing on this newer song? <laughs> yeah. Very true. Good point. We, make it happen. We do have, we do have a lot of people when they come see us when we do when we do set up a gig, they see us because they say and they always say to us after the shows, We love seeing you guys because it, it harkens back when mm. Steve and Ed still sang together and the whole band was together. And again, like we're on the Canadian border, so half our audience is from yeah. Canada. So they're just it, for to them it's like the soundtrack to their life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm able to replicate it and it just brings back memories of oh yeah we used to go camping when we were in college or whatever and so yeah so that's it's it's pretty cool so yeah so we so we don't we don't plan on, on uh, continuing uh, continuing without rocky in the band <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard that the spoken word is the binding contract in city new york <laughs> we got it on record job security even yeah now nah, tied to the hip with you rock you know i love you even though i bust we bust the chops to the singers but but we but we love them it's okay we have thick skin well, I think that's now that you said it. I think that's what's really unique about you guys. Now that we've heard, you know, what we've heard, and and and, and you know, Dan, you play and Rocky's very Steve voice and everything. That when you're doing material, if you're doing material that's that's post Steve, you know, you're giving a lot of fans. Because I think I speak for a lot of people. I don't like to say it too often, but yeah, the post Steve stuff is for me. It was it was hard to get into at first because I love Steve and I love Ed and I love their playoff and. Um, so you're giving a lot of fans what they want by performing songs the way we think they would probably sound if those two were still together, yeah. which is cool. Very cool. The other this guy is... in the band, Patrick Clut, the guy who does the, uh, the Ed part, um, right. he's spot on too. I mean, like Dan said, he's, he's, just a tr- he's a tremendous musician. All the guys. These guys in the band, when we got together, and I was an athlete growing up, I wasn't really a musician or a lyricist, Aaron. So, um, <laughs> you know, when these guys got together, I didn't know what I was walking into. And when I hit the first note, and it was just the tone was perfect. You know, everything was just perfect about it. I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm done. You know, what do I? Do? <laughs> you guys have like a tambourine I can maybe bang around, or maybe a triangle I can bang. <laughs> um, these guys, it's just been a, it's been a blast for 15 years, and they really do a good job of representing the music. I mean, the best job out there outside, of course, Pernicky Ladies. And uh, but Dan's an accomplished musician. Pat does unbelievably well. Uh, Dennis on guitars, John Sakamano on guitars, Dave on the drums. It's a really nice mix out there. And when you look at us, much like the Bare Naked Ladies, um, you, you make sure you didn't have a greasy dinner. <laughs> you know, so, um, but when they hear people get into it and they really enjoy it, and it's been a really nice ride for 15 years. It really has been. And so, it ain't over yet. We still play. Yeah, we still play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no splitting up. We already had yeah. mom and dad split up. We don't. <laughs> well, the, fu- the funny thing, too, about the band is that. Um, you know, much much like the bare naked ladies, we're all from the same area. Um, we all kind of went to the same high school too. Different, not the same age, different ages. We, we're all from a town called West Seneca, New York, which is outside of Buffalo, um, which is really weird. Um, Pat Pat Collette's the only one who's from. He's a little bit further outside of Buffalo. He's south of Rochester, and he plays the keyboards. <laughs> yeah, he plays the keyboards. <laughs> and he, but he moved to Buffalo, lived in Buffalo. And Pat and I, Pat and I played in an original music band together. And Pat played guitar in that band, and I played bass in that band. Um, and it was an all original music, and you know, just a rock band, original music. And then um, Pat's a web designer by day. He's a web developer, web designer. So Rocky and I met in a bar, which is a common theme. We're just a couple of church. Drunk- we're a church. We're a church. <laughs> we met in church and so we kind of you know started this this whole tribute band thing and then um i went to pat and said to pat you know i said i said to rocky well hey you know i'll 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 get the i'll get the musicians man you just you know rocky booked for the first gig i said i'll find the, the musicians we'll pull it together we'll, we'll do a gig um and then i called up pat because i said oh sh- we need a website so i um so pat wasn't in the band originally and so it was just actually rocky and i was going to sing the ed parts and then uh, I called Pat and I said, can you do the website? And Pat said, oh, Bare Naked Ladies? Yeah, man. Oh, man. Oh, I love Bare Naked Ladies. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. You like Bare Naked Ladies? So we knew each other for about seven years. <laughs> didn't know he was a Bare Naked Ladies fan. And um, he played guitar. And I said, oh, well, we already got two guitar players. We don't need another one of those. We need, we need, a, you know, we need a, a keyboard player if you know anybody. And he said, oh, I play keyboards too. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> him as a guitar player 
um, he shows up at the, at the rehearsal and he's playing piano, like, you know, beautiful Kevin piano. He's like a beautiful piano player, he's a great guitar player, amazing piano player. And then he's, you know, I was struggling doing the bulk of the Ed parts and playing bass as Aaron, we were talking about earlier, singing back, you know, and, uh, and so Pat just like casually says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try the Ed parts. <laughs> Man, every time, chicken to China, the Chinese shit, he, in 15 <laughs> years, he has never messed up a lyric, this wow. guy. Wow. Every rap, every rap spot on perfectly. That's better than Ed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I said, Kevin's like, there's... Pat is definitely our secret weapon. So, so yeah. So every guy in our in our tribute band kind of has like their job. Um, we're kind of a little bit of each, you know. Like I'm, I'm a guitar player slash bass player. Pat's a piano player. But, but yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool to 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 do this stuff. And and we say to ourselves too, even though it's a tribute band cover band, we've grown as musicians doing the music of Bare Naked Ladies, because it's gotten out of our comfort zones. It's made us learn complicated things or you know types of music and tempos and styles we wouldn't try before so yeah so it's 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 been a really cool ride for 15 years and i you know we're not done yet so <laughs> to play somewhere soon yeah, we'll let you guys know. yeah definitely we'll house you yeah and if people want to be able to to book you and reach you how do they go about doing that they can, they can come to our facebook page um that's um we we took down our, our band website because it just got tiring <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, we pretty much, we, we, so yeah, at this point we're on, we're on Facebook. Um, come find us. Um, you know, we've got our email number, our email on there, our phone number. We pretty much play in Buffalo, but we're willing to travel. You know, we've played as far as, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire. Wow. So we're kind of, we're willing to, to travel if the price is right or if it interests us. Um, but you won't go to Pennsylvania. Sure. <laughs> we'll <come> to Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of BNL fans in Pennsylvania. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let, let us let us know of a bar, but we we would love to go to a bar where there's a bunch of fans and everything. And we put on a show. Yeah, absolutely. That, that we would do that. That'd be fun. Yeah, we, we, we're lit. If there's if there's fans of BNL out there, um, we'll play there. And yeah, bar anything going on, uh, knock on wood, they'll enjoy it. I mean, I we were I think one of the first bare naked ladies tribute bands out there. Now you see a couple more out there. I've seen them out there on the internet and whatever. I still put, we're the best. You know, it sounds a little yeah. weird, but I think we are the best out there. People come out and see us. They will be pleasantly surprised and really enjoy themselves. So, you know, we're ready for Pennsylvania. We're ready for Maine. I want to go see Paul in Springs. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally right down the road. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that we do on this show is we rate these songs. So we rate it from zero to five, and you can do decimal points. We rate, and uh, I, I joke around with these guys and make them usually go first. I will go first. I will take the hit this oh, week rather than pass it right. around just to kind of give it a go. I absolutely love this song. If you hadn't guessed it already, I know that I had to give it a Trouble with Tracy moment, but really it's a minor ding, if anything. The mixing is is my very very minor i just want to hear a little bit more ed but i seek this song out every single time i struggled with how far up i should actually put that this week because is it a five or not was my was my question um i i finally settled after looking at a number a lot of the other songs uh at a 4.7 all right i'm gonna pass it over to aaron all right i really 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 like this song i'm a little bit torn because part of me thinks it's right up there with enid which is one of my absolute favorite bnl tunes but enid has that absolute banger of a bridge into the last chorus and the climax is just so satisfying humor of the situation i feel like it almost achieves this with that last extended pre-chorus into the final chorus I think I might prefer the verse sections in this one. I don't know. Uh, the pre-chorus is amazing. The chorus is pretty great as well. I really like it. I like it at least as much as Call and Answer, which is a very different song, I know. But uh, <laughs> I like that one quite a bit, too. And I gave that a solid 4.5. And I do really like that tune. I think I'm going to give this a... F Wait, what do we get? What's the uh, what's the unit of measurement for this one? How many hands? Cold, cold showers? Oh, okay. I like hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it... I'm going to give uh, the humor, humor of the situation... A 4.5 hens out of five with an asterisk that I may have to revisit come this new year. All right. Um, Stefan, let's hand it over to you. I like the song. I like the uh, I like the beat of it. I love the chorus. I like how it all blends together. 
and it's pretty smooth. I love how BNL just is able to take another deep yet dark and uh, lyrics that you can just you can go anywhere with, and it's uh, unlimited as far as how you can translate them and apply them to your own life. If that's the case with this song, I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> I really like the song. Yeah, I think it's up there as well. I would have to agree with uh, both of you guys as being a good song that's able to really uplift you, regardless of what is being said in it. You know, even like a bittersweet kind of satisfaction with knowing that this uh, man whore, I guess you could say, (laughs) has been found out. The hens have crossed the street, and he was soaked by the neighbor's hoe saying, get the heck off my lawn, you tramp. (laughs) <laughs> so, I I like it. So, for me, how many hens? I would say 4.3. All right, guys. I, I get the feeling that you guys get the, the feel of this so far. Um, so, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'll let you guys decide, decide which of you will go first. But hand it over to you, Dan and Rocky. How many hens do you give this song? So Dan's going first. Okay. I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to say that. I just like a good straight up, like, you know, nice three minute pop song. And uh, I respect anybody that can write something that is memorable. And again, I think this is a good overall song, but I think like Aaron and some of you pointed out earlier, it it does have kind of like, it's a very, um, you know, again, uh, some of the drive up the middle of all the instruments going in the same direction. It can be like, it's good that three minutes, if it went on for five minutes, it might be too much. I'm going to give it the overall, like we said, we play it live every time and people love it. So I feel like this is a 4.6 hens in my book. <laughs> All right. Good vote, Jane. I end on that chord. <laughs> <laughs> 4.6 hens. <laughs> Rocky, what do you give this song? I have always been a huge, huge fan of Bare Lady. So to rank anything... Anytime the song's on, it's never a turn it off, it's turn it off. So that's always a good thing for me personally, because it's just bad mood, good mood, and different. You hear the song, all of a sudden you're pumped for something, whatever it's going to be, you know, going to your kid's game or doing whatever you're going to do. So I'm a little bit biased. I am going to put it at a uh, 4.95 hens. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, that leaves you. What do you give this song? Bring it up the rear. Um, all right, well, for me, this song is uh, the perfect storm of everything I love about Bare Naked Ladies. I am a huge fan of Steve's vocals, which shine on this song. I am a fan of the biting, sarcastic lyrics that are, you know, however you interpret the song, and we know that I feel it's it's about the man whore. But, um, <laughs> but it's, it's a bright song that, that sounds like it could be dark and just sneak it in that whole joke in the middle. Like, like the guy's about to tell you a joke um, and twist the whole song around to his comeuppance. Um, I love that moment of the song. It's fun. I like that they go from really insightful lyrics or fun, playful lyrics to the basic chorus, like the come on now, now, come on now, now, you know, I like that. There's that little moment of brevity in there. And uh, we all know that I'm a Kevin fan. So, (laughs) and this is, this is a Kevin song through and through. Um, so it's a, it's a perfect storm of everything I love about Bare Naked Ladies. Um, like Rocky said, this is a song that when it comes on, it's going to get cranked up every single time. Um, no, without fail. Um, I won't stop until this one's over. I'm not going to get out of the car until this song's over. Um, are there some songs in my head that I know that I would probably rank higher for various reasons? Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to give this one a 4.7 hens. Nice. All right, and that gives us an average of 4.625. That baby is up there. (laughs) All right, so going along with the theme of naked bodies, uh, seems to be kind of the theme of tonight's song, the appearance for this week is Steven doing, during the Leonard Cohen tribute concert, there's a him doing a version of Memories. Um, what? 
So when you from watch cats? this, of course, you'll get the oh, yeah. name. No, not from Cats. <laughs> no, the, the Leonard song. Cohen song. Cohen song, yeah. yeah I, was <laughs> I was being sarcastic. I was being sarcastic. Oh, hey. Oh. I applaud pun that master. bad pun. How I'm long is that going to last? <laughs> oh. <laughs> So yes, I recommend everyone going out. It really shocked me. I'd never heard this song before. When I heard it, it, it really kind of took me over. Um, and it's interesting that that Steve decided to cover this song of all songs um, as a concert tribute. But it really is a lot of fun to listen to him singing it. So go out and listen to that. That's surprising, considering I mentioned Leonard Cohen earlier, and I had no idea you were going to do this one. <laughs> it's really cool. I didn't know this existed, so I got to check this out now. That's amazing. All right, guys, I got to go. I, I got to go set up my kid's swing. It, it's a huge deal. I have to pull out the ladder, ratchet it all the way up to the top setting just to get, get up to the first branch. I mean, well, I mean, you guys get what I'm saying, don't you? Mm-hmm. It, it's a humongous <laughs> tree. <laughs> How big of a tree is? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the song that we'll be covering next week is Humongous Tree. So come back and join us for that song. <laughs> this is coming from the guy who gave me grief for my cat pun. <laughs> <laughs> and now, as a rare treat, we're going to be sung out by fully clothed gents. Have a great week and thanks. That was fun. Excuse me, I hope you don't mind. I found you in the shop. I couldn't help but notice I didn't cry Stick around Well, you'll have to set by I wouldn't mind Riding you back Be back Subtle on the dance floor And he's swab around the bar Whoa. He's a quick draw with a lighter He's a pseudo-movie star You know, he was quite a singer Quite an actor Quite some time ago He was quite a famous program Late night bedtime TV show You know, he's not the king of that side of man Hey, hey, hey He's not the Tom Jones Who lives next door Not anymore He's not the king of bedside man no. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wilde, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.